Hi, in two previous videos, I've showed you how to replace the doorbell push button on your Newtone front door station, and I've also showed you how to replace the speaker cone behind the grill on your Newtone front door entry station. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace the entire station with a brand new modern one. This is our old friend, the IS69 polished brass or PB uh, that was in the other two videos and you can see that this speaker is probably from the early 90s and you can see how the polished brass is the finish has become all pitted and discolored and it's just rather nasty looking uh, there's even some rust marks here where water has run down the front of it on the grill and if you consider that this is on the front of your house and it's what people see when they walk up it's not very appealing. So in a lot of cases, if your speaker is in good cosmetic condition, replacing the button and the speaker cone will give it years of life into the future. Uh, but if it's cosmetically worn out, it's a good opportunity to replace it. So replacing the speaker is rather easy. For the most part, the only tools you'll need to do it are a Phillips screwdriver and a pair of wire cutters. Of course, you'll need a new speaker and if you happen to have a cordless drill, that makes it go a little faster. We probably won't use the cordless drill on the video. We'll just do it the old fashioned way with hand tools. So first thing to do is we need to take the speaker off the wall. So here we have our faux exterior, exterior stucco wall that you would see on most homes. And the speaker is held to the rough end box or the wall housing that's behind it with two screws, one here and one here. And Newtone has used a lot of different kinds of screws over the years. In this particular example, we have some fairly long, and when I say long, I mean long, not quite there yet. Okay, almost, okay, machine screw. So here's the machine screw. These are about uh, two and a half inch long. On later door speakers made in the 2000s, this would be the same length. It would be more of a wood screw thread than a machine screw. So uh, we'll take the bottom one out first. We want to save these because I'll show you why in a minute. I think since they're so long, maybe we will do it the faster way. And that just makes it go really quickly. So we'll save the second screw also. And now we're going to take the speaker away from the wall. And you'll see that it has a cable that comes out of the wall, the rough-in box. This is the rough-in box. All recessed Newtone door speakers from the very beginning, from all the way back in the late 1950s, use this same basic box. In earlier versions, uh, they were gray in color in the 70s and 80s. They were brown. And then sometime in the late or mid 90s, I think, they went with the silver finish on them. It's just a galvanized finish. It is a metal box with a back on it. The, the last iterations of this starting in, say, the early 1970s, it's a model IR6. IR is intercom roughen, and it's a number six. So earlier models have different model numbers, but they're all essentially the same. So what we see coming out of the rough-in box is a multi-wired cable. This happens to be a piece of Newtone IW6, which is uh, a good choice when you're wiring a home because you have some extra wires in here that aren't used, but it's always good to have backup wires. And what you see here is the red wires are connected to the back of the doorbell button and the black wires are connected to the back of the speaker cone. So the first thing we need to do is disconnect these. And to do that, we'll loosen the screws on the speaker cone and unhook the wires. And then we'll, oh wait, so before we take the other pair off the back of the button, it's important to remember which wires go where. If you get them mixed up when you go to hook them back up, 
then your system won't work correctly. So let's go ahead and mark these so we remember where they are, where they go. So all I'm going to do to mark these is I'm going to take a piece of blue masking tape and I'm not going to put it around each of the sets of wires. I'm just going to put it around the cable all together like that. And that gives me a convenient place to write on where we're going to write down that the speaker is black and the push button PB is red. And that's all you have to remember. Or an alternate way to do it is you can use your camera phone and take a picture of it before you disconnect it and then you can just refer back to the picture. So the button has already fallen off the back of the push button part of the other half of it, which is fine. So we'll take our old door speaker and that's going to go in the trash. And now we'll disconnect the wires off the back of the button. and the button goes in the, in the bin also. All right, so now all that we have left are our wires and our wall roughing. So let's choose a new speaker to put in its place. Let's say instead of going with the polished brass, you decide you're gonna go with a nice, bright, white, brand new speaker. So this is a modern new tone door speaker. This is currently manufactured today. Uh, we received this from Newtone a few weeks ago as part of our standard monthly order. And this is a model NDB 300 white. And the white one is made out of white plastic and it has the doorbell button here with the white push button part. This is a lit doorbell button, there's a bulb in it. So if we were gonna put this in place of our old one, just as an example, you'll notice something. If we hold it up here, it's not the right size. It's a little bit too narrow and you can see the edge of the rough in and the screw holes here and here don't line up with the screw holes here and here. So what's up with that? Well, what's up with that is Newtone in its uh, infinite wisdom decided that when they came out with a new series of door speakers seven or eight years ago that they were going to make them slightly smaller than the door speaker size, this that they pretty much had made consistently since 1957. So whoever the guy was that decided to make that decision, hopefully he got fired. So to make up for that, they make an adapter frame. And this is the adapter frame that goes with the white speaker, like this. And this is a model NF300DWH because we really need really long model numbers to make it extra complicated. But fortunately, at least it's a good design. So the way this will work is this will get mounted here over the existing rough end, and there's a screw hole here and a screw hole here, which line up with the existing screw tabs here and here. And then the new speaker will sit on the face of it. All in all, based on customers' reactions when I install these, everybody thinks they're pretty much okay. So that's not bad. Another thing that was decision that apparently was made at Newtone at the time they came up with all of this was that these update frames are only available in white plastic. However, the front door stations, we do have a white plastic one, but they also make some metal grilled ones which are available in polished brass, antique brass, and what they call nickel, which is really chrome. And when you think chrome, think the, about like the bumper on your 65 Mustang. It's that kind of chrome. So if you want to do a white speaker and a white update frame, that works out really well. But if you want to do, say, a really nice antique brass door speaker, and you sit it on top of a white update frame, that looks pretty hideous. So what we do for our customers, and we also do sell them, are we take the white update frames and we paint them. See, it's white on the back. We paint them, we prime them, and then we give them two coats of, this is a hammered bronze finish. And the hammered bronze finish works really well with the polished brass and the antique brass. And then we also have another one that's a hammered 
uh, dark gray, sort of a metallic-y look, which goes pretty well with the chrome. So if we do the antique brass with the specially custom painted update frame, you end up with something like that. And I've yet to have anyone complain about how that looks. So let me show you how to go ahead and put this together. So to make it a little clearer and easier to see on the video, we're gonna start with the white one because the white one shows up the best. And then at the end, we'll do the antique brass with the bronze update frame. So your update frame comes with two small mounting screws, which will fit through the holes in the update frame and screw into the mounting tabs on the on the roughing. These screws are about an inch long and they work perfectly well if the roughing is mounted like you see here where the flange of the roughing is up against the face of the stucco wall. And this is how you'll see most roughings installed if the speaker was put in after the stucco was finished or if you have some type of wood siding, the flange may be on the outside of the siding, or it may be just back behind it, which recesses the can about a half an inch into the wall. One of the problems that you come up with a lot of times on stucco walls is the rough-in would have been installed before the lath or chicken wire is put on the house and then the stuccoing is done. In traditional stucco, it's the stucco is nearly three quarters of an inch thick by the time the last coat goes on which means that the rough end can be recessed almost an inch back into the wall and I've seen in many cases where it's recessed a lot further back than that and then of course your little one inch screws won't be long enough so instead of having to go down to the hardware store and buy two screws this is why we saved the original screws from the old speaker. These are two and a half inches long. You can simply use these in the adapter frame and then screw it back into the rough in as it was before. And that's a little bit of a trick that you learn when you do this at people's houses all the time. But for today's application, we're just gonna mount it with the one inch screws that are included because the rough in is on the face of the wall. Also as a point of interest, and this comes up a lot when people buy the white door speakers, and it has to do with hooking up the wires to the push button. If you turn this over, you'll see there are two wires off the speaker cone to connect to the black wires. And this is the back of the area where the push button is located. And people look at this and they think, oh, well, one wire must go here and one wire goes right here and that's actually wrong. So let me get the other speaker to show you. So here's the back of our antique brass door speaker. Again, speaker cone with two wires. Here's the back of the push button, but this time the back of the push button is exposed and you can see the screws that are actually on the back of the button here and here. So on the, what this means is on the white speakers, this is a protective cover and I'm gonna take this off And if we remove this, oh look, there's the back of the button just like on the antique brass one with the two actual screws where the wires actually go. I'm not sure at all why Newtone thought it was necessary to put a plastic cover on this one and not on the antique brass one, but just as a tip, you have to take this off, the button wires go here, and then you can put the cover back on if you want to you don't really have to. So, okay, let's go ahead and actually put our proper one in now. So we'll take our antique brass update frame, or our bronze update frame, I should say, and we'll put a screw in it. And you just put the screw into the mounting tab on your IR6. and tighten it down most of the way, but not all the way. And then go ahead and do the bottom one.
Now, the holes where the mounting screws go through are slotted and it allows you to slide it side to side. This way you can level it and make sure it's straight before you tighten it down all the way. Just like that. So that's pretty easy. If your stucco is very heavy or irregular in its texture, you might have some gaps along the sides. And if you do, you can use a little bit of clear silicone or a little bit of caulking, uh, painter's caulking, the type that when you squeeze it out, it comes out white, but then it turns clear as it dries. And you want to fill up the cracks because you don't want water getting down behind this, in behind the speaker and into the inside of your wall. So sealing it up will be important. Now we're going to put our antique brass door speaker up. So what I like to do is I like to do the speaker wires first and then do the push button wires after and I'll show you why. So we'll go ahead and pull the little cable out and like a lot of door speaker cables it's not terribly long. There's really just about enough. So we know that the speaker wires are the black wires because we wrote it down on our tape and what we're going to do is pair each one up twist them together and I like to use these little crimp connectors we call them bean connectors because they look like little beans and you sort of push them down over the twisted ends of the wire and you use a pair of wire cutters and you crimp them close a couple times inside the bean connector the part that covers the joined wires, there are little teeth and as you squeeze it close, it bites into the wire and that way they don't fall off. So we'll put that one on and we'll crimp that one closed. Now the speaker is connected. Now we're going to go ahead and connect our button wires. So the screws on the on the doorbell buttons are rather small so you'll need a small screwdriver for that usually and don't take them out all the way just back them off a little bit and then bend your wire into a hook if it still isn't from the old button like that hook it brr, hook it under the screw and tighten it down and then do the second one like that tighten that one down and that's all there is to it so we've put our red wires back on the push button like we have on our tag and we have the black wires going to the speaker like on the tag one of the questions I'm asked all the time from people about this is, does it matter which wire goes on which side? Should this red one be on the left and this one on the right? Will it mess it up if I reverse them? Same thing for the speakers. You know, they give you a red wire and a black wire, so you would think that it's important, but in reality, it doesn't make any difference. As long as the speaker wires connect to the speaker and the push button wires connect to the push button, that's all, that's re that's all that really matters. So make sure the connections are done well so they're not loose and you're good to go. Okay, so the last part of putting your new speaker in is choosing the correct screws. There are four screws that come with the antique brass door speaker. There are two screws which are about an inch and a quarter long and there's two screws that are about three quarters of an inch long. The long screws are really for new installations when you're, when, when you're not using an update frame and the short screws are better when you're using the update frame. So we'll take the short screws out of the package and we'll stand our speaker up on our painted update frame and we'll put the first one in and just give it a little turn with our fingers and then we'll do the bottom one. All right, and now here's a good tip. 
The heads of the screws are painted black on all of the metal grilled speakers and they're painted white on the white plastic speaker. This is not the time to reach for your cordless drill to run the little tiny screws in with. If you do, the, the screwdriver bit on your drill will most likely slip in the slotted Phillips head of the screw and you'll chip up the black paint and then it looks ugly. So this is when a hand tool comes in handy and all you have to do is tighten the screws down by hand. It would be easier for me to do this if I wasn't standing to the right because I am right handed. If I was on the other side it would be a little easier but it only takes a few turns and you certainly don't need to wrench down on them a lot. You just snug them up and that's it. And there's your brand new entry door station, antique brass, black push button. The ring around the button will be lit at night, uh, or it's actually lit all the time, but this one's not hooked up with our custom painted hammered bronze update frame. And that's all there really is to it. Now, now that you've spent money and time and effort to put in a new front door speaker, we need to keep it looking as good as we can for as long as we can. And anybody who's had anything polished brass or antique brass on the outside of their house, whether it's a door speaker or door hardware or exterior lights, we all know what that ends up looking like over time. And the real question is, why, why does it get like that? Well. One of the reasons is it's not, none of these things are solid brass. They're just brass plated. And then they'll have some type of coating over them that helps protect the brass plating from the air and the moisture. So what happens to these, what causes the finish to fail primarily is if you look around the outside of your house, you'll notice that over time, everything on the outside of the house collects a fine layer of dirt and dust that builds up on it. So if you go outside right now and to your front door speaker and you lick your finger and you go like this, you'll end up with a finger full, full of dirt that was on, built up on the speaker. So when you have dirt build up on your exterior speaker, the dirt holds moisture that's in the air, whether it's from the dew in the morning or if you have really humid weather or from after it rains and it becomes damp and the dampness eats away at the coating that's covering the metal parts and as soon as it eats through it starts to make its way underneath it and it affects the finish of the metal and that's how you end up with something like this. So what do you do about that? It's really not terribly difficult and I've been telling people to do this for 25 years. Take a little pledge. When you go through your house once a week or every couple weeks and you pledge your, furniture, your fine furniture to take the dust off of it, you know, you spend 20 minutes to clean the top of the grand piano because it always seems like it's dusty. When you're all done with it, take your pledge rag that you've cleaned your grand piano with and walk out on your front porch and simply wipe your speaker off. You'll wipe away the dirt, there won't be very much dirt because it only have been a week or two since you did it the last time, and you end up putting a very fine coat of pledge on over the surface of your new door speaker, and that helps keep the dust off of it and the dirt off of it, which helps keep the moisture away from the finish, which makes it last longer. So that's all there is to maintaining your outdoor speaker, and that's all there is to replacing your old, ugly, weathered new tone door station with a nice brand new shiny or maybe not so shiny uh, brand new one. I hope you found this video to be interesting and helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. If you find our other videos to be helpful to you, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's all for today. See you on the next video.